All right, hold on a second. Don't just zip ahead to the tutorial. There's a, some information you're gonna wanna hear after the intro and it, it's, yeah, it's useful. Welcome back designers. My name is Mike Pickett. I'm a vector and logo designer with nearly 20 years in the design industry. In this video, we're gonna talk about color, but it's, it's not just color. It's, I mean, we're not gonna talk about just swatches. It's RGB, CMYK, Bot, Pantone, Global. I know that some of you are just looking at the intro and then zipping forward to the part where I break off an illustrator because you think this stuff that we talk about isn't that important. That hurts my feelings. So in this video, we are gonna talk a lot about color. I do have some stuff that we're gonna do inside of Adobe Illustrator. We'll hop into the computer in a minute. But first, I wanna discuss a few different things. Now, before we get there, if you find this information helpful, I know I've got a lot of designers out there that are kind of just getting started, but I've also had a lot of experienced designers tell me that the information they get off this channel is really useful. If that's you, hit that subscribe button before you go on to the next video. Do it now, you're gonna forget, so I'll just, Go ahead, hit it, and then we can move on. So you've essentially got three different color spaces that you're gonna work in inside of Adobe Illustrator on a pretty consistent basis. There's more than three color spaces available. We're gonna talk about the three most common. Now, number one, we have CMYK, which CMYK stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black is the K. Now, when you're working with CMYK, you're going to enter your values in a percentage. So something, for example, like 10% cyan, 5% magenta, 3% yellow, zero black and that's gonna give you a certain color. So these values are saved inside of your file and then when it gets sent over to the printer, the printer takes those colors, evaluates it, and represents it on whichever material it's being printed. You might not get exactly the same color. Now the second color space that we have that we're gonna work with is RGB, and RGB stands for red, green, blue. I'm not gonna get into the science of it all in here, just know that the basic difference, CMYK is for print, RGB is gonna be for screen. Lastly, we have something called Pantone Colors or PMS, and you're gonna hear this as the Pantone matching system. And these colors are pre-mixed at your printer so that they match exactly. Now, normally you're gonna use Pantone Colors for something like a logo where you want that color consistency over and over again. So let's talk print just for one quick second when we're dealing with CMYK versus Pantone. Now, most of the printers that you're gonna find online, you know the ones, the, you know, 1099 for a box of business cards. They're not gonna work with Pantone colors. They're gonna work in the CMYK color space. Now, if you're dealing with clients, make sure that they really understand which route you're gonna be using for printing. And it's always good to have both options in your pocket. So do a little bit of research and find a printer that works with Pantone, but also has a good quality CMYK option. All right, designers, so now that we've actually looked at kind of the differences in colors, let's hop over into Illustrator and I'll show you how to use the swatches panel inside of Adobe Illustrator and a few different things that you can do with it. All right, designers, so here we are inside of Adobe Illustrator once again, and I've just went ahead and created a new document. If you don't know how to do that, if you're that brand new to Adobe Illustrator, just go up to File and down to New. Now, the reason we wanna do this and not just open an image is that if we open an image, I've actually got one here. So I just went ahead and opened this benchtop lathe filled JPEG. And so this is a JPEG file or an image file. And what happens if I do this? I get zero swatches. So all we end up getting is the none and the registration swatch. Now the registration swatch is something I'm not gonna get into in this video, but I will discuss it in an upcoming video when I talk a little bit more about print. So let's go back to our blank document. If you notice here, I've still got swatches open. And here I have a full array of swatches. Each one of these little boxes here is a swatch. You have two different ways you can display them. Right now we've got it in the thumbnail view. We can also click over here and go to show list view. And that gives me a scroll that I can go through and it lists everything out for me. Now, if you wanna see the CMYK values, this might be the view that you want. And if I just pull this out just a little bit, you can actually see we have like a full CMYK red. We have a full CMYK yellow, green, blue, all the way down. And once we get down to these, you'll actually see that we can go in and we can look at the C, M, Y, and the K values. This is what I was talking about before, that it's from a zero to 100 value. So for example, this one is 100% cyan, 95% magenta, 5% yellow, and zero black would give you that bluish purple color. I like mine in grid view. I'm not really too concerned about the different percentages on anything when I'm working. I can go in and change those as I need to and make adjustments, and I'll show you how to do that as well. 
So the basics of the swatches window, we have this main window down here. We've also got your color books or your swatches library. You can come in here and you'll see a bunch of different ones here. Here's our color books and this is where we can get to our Pantones and we'll get into those in a few minutes. You can also find default swatches in here. There's different foods, gradients, nature. And if you click on any one of these, they'll open up in a little window for you. So let's say we'll go to fruit. That's gonna open up over here. And if I expand this out, we have various colors of fruit. As I hover over each one of these, again, I'm getting that CMYK value. These have been saved into folders. So there's your apple, banana, blueberry, citrus, citrus two, and on down the list. If I wanna to toggle in between the various other ones, so as you can see, again, here we go fruit, we have beverages, fruit, ice cream, sweets, vegetables. Well, if I go to these arrows down here at the bottom, there's ice cream, sweets, vegetables, and I can scroll through everything. And at the bottom of the window here, I have that same little button I can click on to get to the swatches library. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close this window. We'll come back over to our main swatches window. Now our next one here, I'm not gonna get into, this is the color themes palette. This actually loads into a different video that we're gonna talk about where we get into the Adobe color themes. From there, we can go to all swatches. I can only show color swatches, so it gets rid of anything that's not a single color. We can go gradients, which then narrows it down even more, pattern swatches, and down to show color groups. I normally stick with all swatches. Just gives me a wider range of colors that I can choose from. If I click on one of the swatches, I then get this swatches options. And the swatch options window allows me to go in and I can name it. I can select what kind of color this is. So is it a process color or a spot color? Is it a global color? We'll get into global colors in a minute. I can also change my color mode. Color modes that I work in most often are CMYK, HSB, and RGB. I'm gonna come back to this screen in a few minutes and we'll actually go through and I'll talk about how to create a new color and we'll go through the preview options. So for now, I'm just gonna cancel out of this so we can continue on down here. This one, we can create a new color group. So by clicking on that, I can then name it Mike's Amazing Colors. I'm Canadian, I need to put the U in, I'm sorry. Click OK, and then we've got a new group here and we can actually add colors into this. If you wanna change anything in a color group, you can actually click on it and you can edit the colors that are inside of there. So you'll notice these are our main colors and what's gonna come up now is this little edit block. So I can change this if I want that done. And if we click OK, I'm gonna say yes, and you'll see that it then updated that yellow. Now, I normally don't recommend editing any of the stuff that's in here. You should be working with your colors, make your edits, and then you can save those colors out. Now, if I want to add a new color to this group, I'm going to click on the folder, and then I'm going to come down here and click this little plus sign for a new swatch. I'm just going to go with the defaults here and just click OK, and it's going to add it into that folder for me. If I want to get rid of anything, I click on the folder or the swatch, and then just click the little trash can down here, and that's going to delete everything. I'm going to click Yes. Now up in the top hamburger menu, we have pretty much all of the same options that we just talked about down here in the bottom. There's a few other ones, like we can actually go in here and go select all unused. I'm gonna get into these in a minute. You also have an option to duplicate swatches and merge swatches. Duplication you would use if you wanted to grab one of these, duplicate it and then make some changes to it. All right, so that's all of our various options here. Now something that I like to do, and I'm just gonna walk you through the process that I use when I'm done a piece of art. So I've, I've went ahead and opened up a piece that I did a while ago that I didn't actually finish off my final step. My final step is to get rid of all colors that aren't used in this piece and save it so that only the colors that I use to create this are still in the file. So I'm gonna highlight everything. So I've got everything selected and you can see that I have a red line around all of my different colors and it doesn't select anything here. And you'll see that there's nothing highlighted in this box. So those colors that I've used are colors that I created just for this piece. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna come down here and I'm gonna go new color group. And in the new color group dialog box, I have a couple of different options. Now, first of all, I'm gonna name this. So I'm actually gonna go uh, lathe colors. And then I'm gonna create this color group from either selected swatches, which I don't have any selected, or selected artwork. So right now, because I've got the artwork selected, I can create a new folder that's gonna contain just the colors in this piece. I'm gonna leave this convert process to global. I'm gonna leave that checked and I'll show you why in a minute and then include swatches for tints. So if I have any tints that are in here, let's say that I used a Pantone color on one of these and just use a tint of it or a global color and created a tint of it, it's gonna create that tint for me as well. So I'm gonna click okay. 
and now you'll see that everything, each one of these colors that's in that piece of art is now its own little swatch here. This is important for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm now gonna go up to this menu and I'm gonna go select all unused and that's gonna highlight everything that doesn't get used in this piece of artwork. Now it's not gonna grab the black, so I'm gonna command click on the black in this folder. I'm also gonna command click on the black and the white up here. I'm gonna get rid of everything. You can't get rid of the registration and you can't get rid of the none. Those will always be there. Once I have these highlighted, I'm just gonna click on the crash can. It's gonna say, do you want to, are you sure? I'm gonna go yes. And everything's cleaned up now. now. The great thing about this, I'm gonna deselect everything. And the reason I like using global colors is let's say that I'm just not quite happy with this green. It's just not doing it for me. So I'm gonna click on that green. It's gonna show me which one it is because it highlights with that little white box around it. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna make my changes. So I'm just gonna adjust this a little bit. All I want is I just want it like a little bit darker. So I'm gonna add just say 5%. And I'm gonna go preview and it's gonna change everything for me. So again, if I slide this back down to zero, and let's go to 10% and it darkens everything up. And the nice thing is as soon as I click OK, every piece that was that color has now been updated because it's a global color. If that wasn't a global color, it would only update just that single piece and wouldn't update the rest of the artwork. Now we can tell a global color in our palette menu by this little triangle down in the bottom. And if we were using a spot color, there'd be a little dot inside of that. So let me change this just real quick. I'm going to grab that same piece. I'm going to come down. I'm going to go into my color books and I'm going to go Pantone solid coated and we'll just grab a green from here. So you'll notice as soon as I click on this, it adds it into my palette as well. So now that's in my swatches because it's used in here and I've changed that. So that is now a spot color or a Pantone. And you see when I hover over it, it actually shows me it's a Pantone color 103C. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on this one and I'm just gonna color drop back over to this green just so that we're all back to the same again. And I'm gonna delete that one just to get rid of it. One thing I should talk about or one thing I should mention as well, I use HSB for most of my highlights. So I'll go in and create the section that I want to use for my highlight or for my shadow, and then I'll use HSB. But something you can also do is you can use what are called tints. Now tints are done up here in your color panel, not down here in your swatches panel. So let's say we've got this highlight here on the lamp and I wanna create it from this color. I'm just gonna color drop that gray. So they're both the same now. And I'm gonna come up here and you'll see that now I've still got my global. Well, I can do a tint. So I can actually knock this down to say 50. And then when I come out of it, there's that highlight back in there again. So now that I have this, I can actually come in here and I can save this as a new swatch. If we come back down to our swatches panel, you'll see there's my new swatch. So then what I could do is I could grab my magic wand, grab that one. You'll see that's the only other one that's that color that was our previous color. And I can go ahead and click on this one. And now I've got them both that same color. So once again, though, I would want to go in, come up to the top, go down to select all unused, which is just going to be that one gray one now, delete it, click yes. And now I can save my artwork out and I'm not filling this up with a bunch of colors that aren't being used. So there you have it, the swatches panel inside of Adobe Illustrator. A lot of information available in there, everything from global colors to spot colors to CMYK, creating your own folders. As you can see, there's so many things you can do with the swatches panel. Now, if you're looking to be able to recolor your artwork or you're looking at maybe giving your client various logo design color options or colorways, you're going to want to watch this video right up here because it goes through how to recolor your artwork. That's it for me and this one, designers. I hope you pick something up. I hope you learned something. Share this with your friends. Share it with your family. Share it with your dog. Watch it with your sisters, dolls. I really just appreciate you checking out the video. Get out there and design something, and I'll see you in the next one. Look at all the pretty colors.